since the last episode we're having a little bit of a wobble and we're about to lose one of our best players <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 41 of From the Bottom Up to the Top. My name's Mark and on today's episode we have games against Grimsby Town in League 2 and Chesterfield also in League 2. Since you were last with us you will see we are still top of the table. 26 games played. We have a game in hand over the majority of the teams uh, between us and 7th place. Um, top three go up in this league, of course, so uh, the gap between us and Akrings and Stanley, who are currently fourth, um, having them having played one game more than us, um, is, uh, by my maths, something like 12 points. Um, so as it currently stands, there is 12 points, four games effectively uh, between us and them, potentially 15 if we can win the game in hand. Um, and we are also uh, five points uh, clear of Shrewsbury, which could be eight points again if we win that game in hand. So um, I think, um, as I've said before, it'd be great to uh, to finish uh, the season as champions of League Two um, and the series come to that. Um, but any of the top three places, I will uh, be quite happy to um, finish in um, and avoid anything to do with the playoffs uh, this season um, so top three is a definite um, and that's what we've got to really sort of keep our eye on and keep going with um, this is a 46 game season so we are sort of 20 games out from the end of the season so still a, a fair old chunk to go shall we say let's have a look at the games since you were last with us uh the last game of course being Sunderland um since then we beat Oldham 2-1 um not quite the same form as when we beat them 6-0 earlier in the season um Accrington Stanley we lost 1-0 at home and that was uh I think if my memory serves me right and we can filter this um take the competitions out oh Ah, I really didn't want to do that, did I? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, it's over here. Um, dig, 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 League 2. Let's have a look at League 2. There we go. Um, I was going to say that's our... Um, we have lost three times in the league. Doncaster Overs, uh, AFC Wimbledon, and also now Accrington Stanley. But obviously there's a, a long while since then since we last lost in the league right let's switch all competitions back on again uh there we go and we can knock the field back off so um yes it's uh, a 2-1 win again one nil uh, loss against Accrington stanley i'll find my place again in a moment uh and then a two nil win at home to exeter city uh, benny ashley seal from the penalty spot luke armstrong with the other goal a um, bit of a, a nail biter until Luke Armstrong scored that second goal and then a nil nil draw against Leighton Orient um, which uh, again was a bit disappointing um, but then we managed to scrape together and I mean scrape together we were a goal down for most of the match against Stevenage looked like we were going to lose that one as well until uh, Hon Henry Ogenby uh, stepped up in the 89th minute and um, put the ball away uh, for uh, an, an equaliser and uh, I think we were all pretty much uh, stuck with the fact that for the second game in a row we were going to draw and then Tom Cannon um, two minutes into injury time rifled in a winner a late late winner um, for that one so that leaves us with these two games um, near enough a week apart in fact uh yeah near enough a week apart uh, just over a week and a day actually uh grimsby town and chesterfield are our games today uh did mention in the intro that we are about to lose one of our players uh naya kirby has been um the target as we've entered the uh the um, transfer window um, has been a target of Queen's Park Rangers um, and they actually activated his um, 
release clause which was set at 325,000 and so he is on his way out um, not a lot I could do with it um, they're going to pay 20% of any next sale but uh, release course uh, was um, activated and um, yeah we uh, we'll have to say goodbye with him actually it's quite uh, quite decent because the uh, his actual value is 205,000 um, and we've actually managed to get 325,000 for him so he's on his way out um, we have uh, had a look round um, the problem we have financially is we haven't got a lot of room to do uh, anything at the moment we've we've had a poke around there's not really anybody that comes up to his standard so I think it's one of those that we've got to ride it out possibly until the end of the season um, hoping that we might get some transfer um, budget um, in order to bring somebody in or certainly look at uh, perhaps bringing somebody in uh, on a freebie at the end of the season um, but that uh, but in order to try and replace him well not replace him as such but um, to, to, to cover for him for the rest of the season we have brought in Declan Harding he is on loan from Bournemouth um, 18 years old he can play in any of those central um, positions so his uh, favoured position is a, a Mazala in centre midfield um, and then attacking midfield he can play as a shadow striker advanced playmaker or attacking midfielder um, he is also light um, up front in one of those positions can also play on the right side of attacking midfield if we wish him to do so um, yes uh, as I say I don't think he actually stacks up um, compared with Nia Kirby so there we go if you stack him up uh, physicals he's uh, better speed he's better uh, he's better in the air than uh, Nia Kirby pretty much equal and technical attacking vision uh, defending and mental so actually technically he is that little bit better than um, Nia Kirby so maybe he could be a potential target for us um, as we move into the uh, transfer window um yeah we'll see see what energy he brings and see if he uh if if he sort of tops it up and uh how he gets on so that is the um the up-to-date news i think for this episode and it's high time we got on to our first game and here we are in the game we're six to four favorites uh they are on strong recent form we are showing now as inconsistent um we have uh sako jana out with a twisted excuse me with a twisted ankle and uh, yeah um that's a familiar look to the team having said all of that slicker in goal richards beavers joseph and egan raleigh at uh, the back scully at the base of midfield davis kirby and ogenby in central midfield this could be kirby's last game of course and then we have harding and cannon up front uh, harding um we've brought in as i say to replace kirby however um, my assistant has suggested playing harding up front he can play in that position um uh, ashley seals um has been dropped um basically because he's he's lost a little bit of form in fact he doesn't appear yes he does um he's he's lot really lost a lot of form at the moment um and he's not been playing at all well as you can see he's last five games average has gone down 6.60 um so i think uh, maybe uh, worn out he had played absolutely every game for us and we've we've had a really sort of uh, a busy schedule i think probably just needs a little bit of a rest um as much as anything else anyway um harding is going to take up that position in front for this game on the bench we have alan thomas sarah white young harris and armstrong carter has uh, been dropped from the bench uh harry allen coming in um purely because one of the uh things that we do have to have we have uh, have to have homegrown player at club which is normally nico gordon who is injured um so we can't put nico gordon in there so harry allen 
um, has come in as the one minimum one player that is trained uh, or homegrown at club. So he's come through the uh, through the ranks. So uh, yeah, that's uh, how we're doing with that. That is the team that we are going to submit for this game against Grimsby. Declan Harding needs a number and he will take on the number 51 shirt and I think it was previously worn by um, Ethan Bristow before he was recalled due to injury and all right what are we going to say here we need to encourage the team um, we're going to do the media one on the basis that I'm not sure what else there is that would motivate them at this stage in time. Blundell Park uh, and highlight from kickoff, which is always a bit of a concern. And Egan Riley cuts out the ball to Ogenby. Ogenby comes inside Kirby now. Back to Ogenby. Egan Riley has done the overlap and he will try and get across in. It's blocked and Grimsby managed to get it clear, but only as far as Scully. Scully to Kirby. Kirby through to Ogenby. Ogenby on the overlap. He crosses in, and Cannon has his shot blocked. First shot of the game. We have a corner. Kirby with the corner coming in. Oh, Joseph just over the top. Joseph trying to get back on the score sheet oh, about his sixth of the season something like that. Tom Scully has picked up his 15th yellow card which means he will pick up a three match ban I think it is and they have a corner now headed clear by Joseph but only as far as their player Kirby gets in we'll miss that uh, and Harding passes it to Cannon Cannon holds the ball up looking for and Cannon with a wayward shot in the end. I don't know if he was across the face of goal to see if somebody would get on the end of it, but uh, nobody was going to get on the end of it. Tom Scully has been booked, so we'll tell him to ease off. And looks like we're going into half time at nil nil. Egan Riley now picked up his seventh yellow card of the season. And we have had the better of shots on shots and shots on target albeit we haven't uh, had so much of the possession for this game um, happy with your performance so far keep it up and we need gone a bit goal shy again um, right, anybody needs to motivate here. Jordan Davis isn't having a good game. Declan Harlin isn't either. Jordan Davis, I need to basically be selling him. Yeah. Prove a point. Right, Declan, we're going to tell, assertively tell him, no pressure on you today. Who else needs a bit of a G up? Uh, Lewis Richards, as usual. Passionately tell him. No, we're not going to passionately tell him. I'm not happy with your performance and I think that will do us for the half time talk we are on a positive and as the game goes on it may be that we crank it up to attacking ball forward slicker Picking up the ball. 
forward. Joseph picks the ball up. Egan Riley looking for... I'm not quite sure who he was looking for, actually. Didn't find whoever it was, anyway. And they have a counter-attack on at the moment. And blocked on that right side. Ball forward for Harding. Harding does possess pace, apparently. He's got it through to Cannon. And Scully has got his second goal of the season. Tom Scully... Harding crosses the ball in to Cannon. It was behind him, so he pushes it back for Scully. Scully conjures a little bit of space and rifles it from just outside the area. And we have that goal advantage. I'm tempted to leave it on positive for now. And as the ball comes out, it's stopped in midfield scully with the ball back to egan riley egan riley inside to joseph joseph forward now looking for cannon found him but he didn't head the ball on to anybody in particular and missed header there by joseph but uh, scully cleared tidies up scully having a reasonably good game at the moment Oganby now on the ball has gone inside and really lost his way won it back and lost it again and Davis on that left side has won the ball back. Gets the ball inside to Harding. And Harding hits the post. And goalkeeper's taking it out for a corner. He run at the goalkeeper. Frightened the life out of the goalkeeper, I think. Kirby with the cross in. Oh, just wide by Joseph. Flicked header that time. It looks like Oganby is very, very fat. A lot of our players are very tired. Um, right, let's have a look. Uh, not too bad. Cancel that for a minute. We'll carry on. I was looking at the wrong bit, I think. Um, as I say, Scully having the game of his life at the minute. Kirby putting in... A last shift, possibly last shift. Um, and good at that. Right, let's have a look. See who needs... Everybody seems to have picked up pre pretty well. Um, I'm tempted to take Declan Harding off. And bring Luke Armstrong on just to see if we can squeeze something out from that end uh, he's on 6.6 .6. not bad for a... Egan Raleigh is tiring and on a yellow card right let's do tactical changes then um, right, Oganby's okay. Uh, I'm going to bring Hector Sarah on for Egan Riley on that right side. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that for a minute. As they change it up a little bit. And we've gone through to 85 minutes. And Davis now very tired on that left side. I'm hoping he hasn't picked up a knock. So think what we're going to do is we're going to bring Brad Young on for Davis on that left and Harden obviously trying his best here not to get substituted but Kirby is tired so what we're going to do is we're going to bring Luke Armstrong on for Kirby. 
and we then swap these two around and what's his favorite he's a roaming playmaker on support box to box move advanced playmaker on attack uh, deep line playmaker on support central world midfielder on attack let's leave him as that for now right they are our changes and we have a throw in Sarah to Cannon Cannon Sarah with a cross in it's not going anywhere Scully picks the ball up in midfield passes it all the way back to Slicker Slicker fires one forward and they are on a counter attack but tackled there by Beavers Richards picks it up back to Beavers Young now back to Slicker Grimsby players putting Slicker under pressure. Armstrong picks up the ball and scores his second goal of the season. An assist by Kieran Slicker over the top. Armstrong picks it up and that's the game done and dusted for today. Um, here's the ball forward. Armstrong controls the ball and just fires one from outside the area. And he's second of the season. Oakenby's been booked now, so we'll tell him to steady up. Beavers to Young. Young with the ball across field, not finding anybody. And they have an attack on here. Ball in, and Slicker was equal to that. Cleared by Sarah. And throw in Sarah to Scully. Back to Sarah. Sarah nearly lost the ball. He's fired it across to Young, not found Young. Beavers cuts out the cross come shot. Slicker finds Young. Back to Beavers. Beavers forward now, looking for Cannon. Harding picks it up in midfield. He's won the ball, gets it through, and the defender gets rid of it for a corner. Last kick of the game. Scully with the corner. Scully in swinger. Not really going anywhere. Armstrong picks it up in midfield. He finds Scully still out there. Who pushes it in. Cannon picks it up. It's gone out for a goal kick. In fact, I think probably the whistle had blown at that point. And yeah, 20 shots. 10 of which were on target. It's a shame we didn't score more goals, really. And another good win. Hopefully we're back on the winning trail again. Um, well done, lads. Good win for us. And Scully had a really good game as well there. Albeit we're going to miss him now for three games, I think it is. So, um, we still have a game in hand over Mansfield, who are in third place. Um, but as it currently stands, we are now 15 points clear of Accrington Stanley in fourth. And eight points clear of Shrewsbury, who are in second. So what we need to do is keep winning. Um, and we could be promoted fairly early on in the running. Um, right, Scully on form. Basically, uh, yep, good performance, and it looks like the Port Vale game has been rearranged. And Port Vale playing uh, Cheltenham Town. Now the seventh of February, so we'll see how that works out in the realm of things. Um, Hardy makes his debut so there we go that's the first game of the episode i think it's time to move on to our second game can we continue and have a winning episode we're about to find out the next game is against chesterfield 
And so you come back and uh, this is the game against Chesterfield. Chesterfield have played in the week and most of the other teams have been playing as well. Um, in fact, if we go through to this one, we can see the table a bit better here on the left hand side. So, um, yes, uh, all the other teams have played because we're playing on Sunday uh, that have played during uh, Saturday. So, as you'll see, apart from Mansfield um, and obviously Chesterfield, uh, all the other sides have played. So we now have two game um, um, in hand over them. We are just six point six. Uh, sorry, four points clear of Shrewsbury in second place and ten points clear of Mansfield, who are in fourth place, which is the uh, first of the playoff positions, and twenty points clear of Doncaster, who are in eighth in the non-playoff promotion uh, places. So, um, I think we're fairly okay that we're going to end up one of these places but obviously as I say this is where we want to be so with the two games in hand we could end up on 70 points uh, by the end of those two games um, which would then mean that there are a 16 point gap down to Mansfield as it stands or we've only got one game in hand uh, we've only got one game in hand over them anyway trying to explain that um, so through to our second game uh there we go chesterfield and bradford the side that we've picked for this game is as follows slicker in goal gallagher richards joseph and egan riley richards moving over to the right where beavers usually plays and gallagher coming in for him um scully at the base of midfield davis harding and ogenby are our central midfield harding taking up his place in uh uh, Nia Kirby's uh, space. Uh, Ashley Seal comes back into the side on the left of the Strike Force. Cannon on the right, and our bench looks like this Alan Thomas, Sarah White, Young Harris, and Armstrong. Um, and Nia Kirby has actually now moved to Queen's Park Rangers. He has gone and uh, he's no longer with us so um, and also uh, they are after Ashley Seal along with a group of other uh, teams as well so uh, we've just been having a look um, between games and seeing if there are any uh, free agents a couple of which we've brought in for trials to see if they could uh, potentially replace Ashley Seal if uh, needs be having said that though we do have um, uh, Jenna who uh, we brought in and he's been injured um, he's just coming back to fitness now and we also have um, John McAtee who was playing really well um, up until Cannon coming in so uh, hopefully we can get them back to some form if we need to in the running okay without any more to do let's get on with this game and see if we can have a winning episode and if so, put us in a reasonably good position for the league. Um, all right. Challenge the team to carry on where they left off. Right. Da -da -da -da. Um, want you to pick up where you left off last time. It's had a mediocre response. Any game being played today at uh, the Pro Act Stadium in Chesterfield. We have a corner. Scully with the corner. In it comes. And a penalty. Quite sure what happened there. Right. Ashley Seal. And it's not going to do him any good at all. He's, uh, he's not on top form, is he, Ashley? Um, and the corner coming to nothing. They're making a quick counter-attack here. And we're outnumbered. Egan Riley making the tackle. And Harding back to Richards. Richards forward looking for Ashley Seal. Finds him, but he heads it back to Scully. Scully to Gallagher. Gallagher to Davis gets it into the area Cannon gets the shot but the goalkeeper is always equal to it and 
will we rue that miss, that penalty miss from Ashley Seal? The big problem with Benny Ashley Seal is I think he's had his head turned. And um, yeah, as you see, he's gone down to a 6.2 in the ratings, which is never good. And they've got a penalty now. One penalty apiece. Jordan Davis, obviously, with the foul. Slicker, can you save this? Yes, he can. So, one penalty apiece. And on both occasions, the goalkeeper has made a save. So, all fair and square. But they still have a corner. Headed clear by Joseph. Cannon running out to it. And can he mount a counter-attack here? Hopefully. That's going across field to nobody. And half time comes. Nil nil. Um, again, had the bulk of that half, but again, well not it's possession that we seem to have lost a bit of ground on. Um Right, and far from pleased, which seems to have G'd everybody up. Jordan Davis. I'll tell him to avoid a yellow card. And Benny Ashley Seal. You need to prove to everybody. Tom Cannon having a bad game as well, but then I think he tends to run off. There's quite a few people not having good games here today. Um, right, we'll work our way through them. Um, not happy with your performance. And then there's Ogenby and Harling. Harding, rather. Who are not... Get out there and prove a point. Okay, maybe we need to go to. I think we're on a positive. Let's push on for an attacking. And see if that can do any good. Really do need to win this. Ogenby now picked up his sixth yellow card of the season. They have a throw in in their attacking half. And a goal! Hector Ingram, his third goal of the season, and that puts us well on the back foot now. <laughs> I mentioned a winning episode, and... Uh, Hey, 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 Question of offside here. He's not offside. So we have to see the goal again just to rub it in. Right. Show some passion, for goodness sake. Right. Benny Ashley Seal needs to come off. He's dropped to a 6.1. In fact, Cannon's having a torrid time there as well. Right. I think probably the best thing for Benny Ashley Seal is to actually sell him and get rid of him because he's being a proverbial pain in the backside right now. And I can't say I can be doing with him. He's been fantastic and then he's gone off the boil and really cannot be doing with a player who's not going to play for us because he thinks he's better than Better than no. Going to demand more. Picking up yellow cards. The frustration is creeping in. Scully with the corner. And Joseph over the top. Egan Riley picked up another yellow card. And... Declan Harding now picked up a yellow card as well. We're going to get another fine here. Straight in the arms of the goalkeeper, thankfully. 
All right. realize that neither of those two can play in central midfield which is a bit of a annoyance so it looks like we'll bring Brad Young on for Cannon and he doesn't like it there Ah. Harris isn't much better. I think we're just going to have to go with the fact that this is going to end up another loss. Because we just simply have not got anybody to take that slot. Jordan Davis can't play as a striker. Ogenby can. I've been known to strike late, but it's going to come late again. Harding to Armstrong. Armstrong through to Cannon. And Cannon may have salvaged it. 22nd goal of the season. An assist by Luke Armstrong. And we may have salvaged a point, albeit dropped two points. And as it's one of our games in hand, it's not what we wanted wanted to open a nice convenient gap up at the top is he offside yes he is but it's one of those occasions that we've got away with that I think and very lucky and again you'll see the possession it's it's the possession that we seem to be struggling on um, far from pleased and one two three four five six yellow cards is gonna get us a fine again which isn't ever good rescue a late draw that's two or three games in a row and we have got a thousand pound fine cannon gets player of the match i don't know how he got player of the match he was on 6.2 pretty much until the end in fact i'm not even going to praise him because I just think uh, five games unbeaten now but um, yeah all in all I think we were very lucky there how does that leave us with the table so on 65 points we have a game in hand over these two uh, Mansfield are 
11 points adrift of us on the same amount of games so assuming we can win that game we would be eight points clear of shrewsbury so not much changed really in uh, in the scheme of things and uh, we're still if we win those eight points still 14 points clear of mansfield Ooh, they get those three points 11 points clear of them in uh fourth place so the uh Next games that we're going to see, um, we'll go on down through, and unless something major happens, uh, we will be coming back for the Port Vale and Cheltenham games here. Uh, Port Vale versus Cheltenham will be our next episode, um, which will be episode 42. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have enjoyed today's episode, uh, don't forget to leave me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with future episodes. New episodes currently released every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday uh, at 4.15. Follow me on Twitter for all the updates on this channel and more at Just Offside 2. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye for now.